Hi everyone, and welcome to the Somatic Podcast pilot episode. Uh, I'm Oliver Rick, and this is our very first uh, episode that we're putting out into the world. As the pilot suggests, this is just a small test of what we're going to try to do with the podcast, um, but we wanted to give people an idea of, of the sort of thing we were looking to produce. Basically, the podcast uh, is a discussion of the active body from a critical viewpoint, and we're looking to provide a number of interesting and engaging audio stories, interviews, and insights that people can use as a resource to access these sorts of ideas. This is a creation of both myself and my collaborator, Sam Clevenger, but we're looking for a lot of other people to come on board and to be a part of this project. So if you're willing and you want to, I'll give information at the end of the podcast uh, where you can do so. For now, I'm just going to provide you with this uh, small little five minute uh, piece that we put together about cycling in the city. It's a narrativized piece based on some research that I did, not any city in particular, um, but I think it speaks to a lot of experiences of moving and mobility in the city. So I hope you enjoy and I'll speak to you at the end. The city is constantly moving. Some of this movement happens at unprecedented speeds, as information crosses within and beyond the city almost instantly, while at the same time, parts of the urban landscape slowly crumble back into the ground over many lifetimes. This sense of movement is fundamental to the nature of urban life, and considering how we move within the city has impacts that connect us to the prosaic and the monumental. In today's episode, we will look at a form of mobility that is once again on the rise in America, cycling. The cloud sat heavy overhead, and the air was thick on this late summer's day. I knew the rain was coming, but at this time of year the storms were never far away as water hung dense all around us. No matter what the weather was going to do, it didn't really make a difference. By the time I rode up town, my clothes would be soaked through. I never really realized how the city's avenues rose away from the harbor until I was turning over the pedals on my bike, crossing the city for my first day riding to get to where I needed to go. I pushed off from the curb, skipping around the potholes and cracks in the concrete that scarred almost every street in town. My only respite from this constant vigilance would be as I rolled through downtown, passing right next to those new high-rise apartment buildings. They're so close, yet also a reality many of the city's residents would never have the opportunity to live. Smooth new tarmac stuck to my tires, and the fresh paint of a new bike lane filled my every deep breath. But it was only a short section of my journey, and I was quickly back out into the low-slung strip malls, and row houses of the old working class tenements. I turned right and then left through the winding streets as I crossed through small neighborhoods to avoid main thoroughfares and their fast moving traffic. Passing boarded up row homes, whole blocks evacuated. I passed by reminders of what the city used to be before heavy industry was moved overseas and white working class communities took flight to the suburbs shortly after. Once vibrant neighborhoods are left to crumble, and while communities continue to maintain, they increasingly do so in the face of general ignorance to their existence and an ongoing neglect from the outside. Going to head back onto a major road heading north, I prepare myself for fast moving traffic. My heartbeat keeps rising as cars and trucks fly up behind me, and then it happens. A van cuts it close. His wing mirror brushes my backpack and my hands grip hard as sweat drips out from my palms. I pull away without thinking and close in on the curb. I'm barely hanging on as I ride a tightrope of tarmac inches from the sidewalk. But it's all over in an instant. As the van speeds off into the distance, I ease back out into the road. The moment passed as quickly as it had come. It left nothing other than a deeply felt sense of that space. The memory of a near mist etched into my mind and into my body. I quickly took the next turn back into the neighborhoods and pushed on with my journey, 
riding through the city. everyone thank you for listening um, i hope you enjoyed this little short audio piece this week we're trying to put together just some examples of uh, what we're trying to do with the podcast we're certainly not trying to be the only voice on this podcast and so we're really interested in getting people in to collaborate with us um, to make audio pieces either narrativized tellings like this one um, more journalistic pieces or interviews or anything else creative that's related to the body of motion from a critical standpoint we hope this is going to be a fun and exciting project. It can be a really useful resource in the future. We're hoping that we can bring as many people on board uh, with different viewpoints and different things to say as possible. Um, if you have any more questions for us uh, or you want any more information, feel free to go to the Somatic Podcast website, uh, somaticpodcast.com. Um, and if you want to get in contact with us directly, you can send us an email at somaticpodcast at gmail.com as well. Um, on behalf of myself and uh, the co-creator for this podcast, uh, Sam Clevenger, uh, we both want to just say thank you very much for listening um, and that this has been Somatic. <laughs>